a lot of times you will find yourself delivering a research paper in the form of a research presentation. It could be your own research paper for a conference or thesis defense, or it could be someone else's research paper you're presenting for a college assignment. So how do you convert a research paper into a research presentation? What information should you include? How much time should you spend on each section? And how do you make your slides attractive? Well, let's find out. Hi everyone, I am Neha Agrawal. I'm the founder of WiseUp. And on this channel, I make videos on studying abroad, job readiness, research mastery, and communication skills. Essentially, those topics where you need to become wiser to succeed in your career. So if any of these topics are relevant to you, you can subscribe to this channel. And now, let's talk about how to convert research papers into research presentations. Let's start with the content of a research presentation. If you look at a research paper, you will find some of these common sections, which is the abstract, introduction, materials and methods, results and discussion, conclusion, and even sections like acknowledgement and references. Now, in a research presentation, we include majority of these sections, except one, which is the abstract. Now, why is that? Because an abstract is a summary of your entire research paper. And the research presentation itself is an extended version of an abstract. So there is no point in including this section. Now, if you want to understand what information to include in each of these sections in a research presentation, such as the introduction, materials and methods, result and discussion, well, all this information I've shared in my previous video. You can check it out there. There is no point in repeating that content here. Now, the next thing you need to understand is how much time you should be spending on each section. And this is where I've seen majority of people also making a mistake. So in general, in research presentations, people spend maximum amount of time on the literature review or the introduction section. But what you need to realize is that a research presentation is about you and what you have done rather than focusing on what others have achieved. So in a research presentation, instead of focusing on the literature or the introduction part, maximum focus should be on the results and discussion section. So if it was a 20 minute presentation that you had to deliver, seven to eight minutes of your time should be spent on the results and discussion section. Three to four minutes on the introduction section, two to three minutes on materials and methods, and another three to four minutes on your conclusion, summary, future scope, etc. At this point, another important thing to understand is how much content should you really be including in your presentation. Because some research papers can be really long. And if you have a 10 minute presentation, then it's not possible to include everything that's there in the research paper into your presentation. So in such a case, you really need to exercise your own discretion and understand what is the most important literature to be mentioned. You only include that. Then whatever is the most important materials and methods, you only mention that along with the corresponding results and discussion. Anything which is extra, anything which is too detailed can be left out for the purpose of the presentation. Another mistake that I've seen people making is including graphs and illustrations that they are not going to explain. For example, you have a graph which has seven to eight different plots and you don't have that much time to explain each plot in your presentation. So the rule of thumb is that you should only include those things in your presentation that you have the time to explain. Anything that you can't explain should be left out of your presentation. Now that we know how to organize the content of a research presentation, let's talk about the designing part. So when designing a research presentation, make sure you choose a simple template that doesn't occupy too much slide space with a nice color theme. Now, the main thing that makes a research presentation stand out is the graphics. So whatever graphics you're planning to include in your presentation, it could be photographs, it could be charts and graphs, it could be pictures or images that you get out of instruments such as SEM, TEM, etc or it could be illustrations for your methodology section. All of these should be of the highest quality because higher the quality of these images, more attractive your slides and presentation is going to become. Another common mistake that I've seen people making at this point is that when they crop the picture out of a research paper, they also crop the caption along with it and then they paste the whole thing in their research presentation. So now your picture actually says figure three but it might not be figure three of your presentation. 
So please don't be so lazy. Only crop the picture and try to write the caption on your own. And there's no need to number the images in your presentation, okay? Just a simple caption would do. Another important thing when designing presentations is to not include a lot of text. Nobody is going to read so much text off a slide. So instead of copying paragraphs from a research paper, try to deliver your story through pictures with only the key insights, key results shared in the form of text. This will make your slides more clean and easy to follow. Another thing that you can do is add labelings to highlight the most important part in your images so that the audience, the moment they look at the picture, they are able to understand the most important takeaway from them. Now, if you wish to learn in detail how to prepare these research presentations, learn a lot of modern PowerPoint techniques, understand how to deliver these research presentations confidently, and also learn the trick and tips to design posters for conferences, then you can join me for my course on Mastering the Art of Research Presentations. To know more, the link is in the description and in the pinned comment. And now that we're done with the designing part, Let's talk about the last component, which is delivery. When writing a research paper, we generally use complex sentences and complex vocabulary to make our writing more scientifically accurate and create a better impression. But what you need to understand is that when we are reading a research paper, if we don't understand something, we can always read those lines again. But when we are listening to a research presentation, we can't do that. We only have one chance to understand what the speaker is saying. So as presenters, as people who are delivering the research presentation, it is our responsibility to make sure that our audience understands all the information in one go. So in contrary to a research paper, when delivering a research presentation, we do that in simple and easy to understand English. Don't mistake me, we will definitely use the technical terminologies that are part of our research, but we will adopt a more conversational style so that people are able to understand us clearly. Now, if you wish to learn in detail how to write a research paper, then you can join me for my course on the complete guide to research paper writing. I've put both the links to it in the description and in the pinned comment. So guys, that's all that I wanted to share with you today. Hope you've gotten a complete understanding of how to convert a research paper into a research presentation. If you have any doubts, please put them down in the comments below and I will address them for you. And now, thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you have a fantastic research journey ahead.